It's April the 16th Picks Edition of the MLB Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. It's brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play their fantasy pick'em for a chance to win 100x in NBA, MLB, MMA, NHL, golf and more. Sign up today. Use the promo code MLBSGPN to get a 100% deposit match. Plus, the NFL Draft is coming up. An old-fashioned football is giving away some autographed NFL merch to celebrate. Head to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash OFF contest to enter today. Welcome, everybody, to the MLB Gambling Podcast on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. My name is Malcolm Bamford, coming to you from Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. Today is Monday, April the 15th. And we're here to have a look at a full slate of card, uh, a full slate of games for Tuesday, February 16th. Joining me, uh, as yesterday, we're going back to back. Um, Mr. Lonte Smith. Lonte, hello, mate. How are you? Yeah, man. Reminds me of Shohei and uh, Trout, you know, going back to back uh, a few <laughs> years back. But yeah, man, uh, looking forward to it. Pretty much got similar handicaps from yesterday, but man, I think we can get on the board. Uh, took an L with Boston today, but did catch that first five under. Um, but yeah, man, looking forward to breaking down the card, and hopefully we can get some winners today and tomorrow. Yeah, I wasn't thrilled with Boston at all. It was one of my best plays, and through I just kept waiting for them to score some runs. It was a great time for me to watch. Um, and we got through six innings scoreless, and I said, like, "Yeah, this is the plan. Just score some runs." And then we thought Cleveland's bullpen. And then all of a sudden, it was Cleveland who scored the run. So um, Ryan, who was first in the chat, waiting to pounce, uh, telling us that the Sox had zero defence. But they didn't, and they had zero offence. Um, Matty DM's got them on his do not bet list as well. So um, hello to everyone, all of those fellas who have joined. Randy's here as well, TVDBJ. Captain Sano. Um the Forklift Certified Gambling Podcast. Um, wondering why I'm partially sitting in the dog. I haven't turned my ring light on because both my eyeballs have swollen up and turned purple. You might have noticed. And uh, people don't need to see that. So I'm st- I'm sitting back and I'm sitting in the shadows. Uh, so if you, wanted, if you want any eye candy tonight, uh, you'll have to make it with Lonte. Like. Um, so, yeah, today's a bit of a weird one because... Um, There was only that one game, the Patriots Day game, and we handicapped the first games of these series yesterday and, as yet, haven't seen any of the teams in action apart from Boston and Cleveland earlier on. So a lot of what we thought about the series, what we thought about the offences, how the trends might go, what we were expecting over a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday slate, um... Hasn't changed, and you don't get a new opinion on those. It's not like Dylan or Scott Moon after here with a new set of eyeballs, which is what I would do with anyway. Um, but anyway, we have got a whole new set of pictures, and uh, yeah, we'll get through. It'll be absolutely fine. Looking forward to it. Um, we'll move on though. And once I've told you first about, um, we like to uh, to plug a little different show every week here. Uh, and the one we're going with this week is the Old Fashioned Football Podcast, uh, which is a really good show. And I'm concentrating on the NFL Draft, which is just around the corner. Uh, so the Old Fashioned Football Show is giving away some autographed merch. Um, we, what have we got? Is it signed? Travis Etienne, J.K. Dobbins, Frank Gore, JSN. Who's JSN? I should know. J- Who's JSN? Uh, Jackson Smith and the Jigba, I'm guessing. Is that for the Seahawks. Ah. <laughs> His brother plays for the Pirates, doesn't he? Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. No, I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, he's an outfit. I don't think he broke camp, but he'll be up this season. Canaan, um, Canaan. I'm not sure how to... Yeah, C-A-N-A-N. Canaan, Smith okay. and Jigba. Uh, yeah, fun prospect for Pittsburgh. They've all great. autographed this anyway. Um, so come for the football and stay for the whiskey. Go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash OFF contest. Underdog Fantasy, easiest and best place. The quickest growing app to play fantasy sports as well. Pick higher or lower uh, on the stat totals for a chance to win big. You can win up to 100 times your money on a single night by picking between two or five players and getting your picks right. 
Um, someone in the Discord channel earlier on asked uh, why we don't give out an underdog, um, an underdog uh, lineup on the show, like they do in the NBA show. So that's a really good idea. The reason I don't is I can't get on the site. I'm geo located out, uh, but Moonaf and the boys can. So we'll stick that uh, in the pipeline. I can't remember the name of the person. My Discord's still knackered, by the way. I wasn't being rude. I just thought I would answer you here and now rather than on the Discord. Uh, so yeah, we'll try and get to that. I can't. But the other boys can uh, sign up at underdogfantasy.com. Uh, Use the promo code MLB SGPN. Get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Must be 80 or over. Presently, stay where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play, call 1 800 522 4700 or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Okay, Tuesday, April the 16th. Uh, one afternoon game. Um, which, as of yet, isn't the most exciting game from a betting point of view because it's off the board. Texas um, pitcher is TBD, unfortunately. Um, Detroit are the opposition. Uh, they have Casey Mize going. Um, I think it's going to be John Gray going for Texas. Yeah, that's what, that's what I think too. You got We're well, okay, so that's mm -hmm. a good start. Lund is handicraft. Uh, <clears throat> John Gray as well. But no lines, unfortunately, unless you've seen any Lonte. Um, no, I don't. What do you I don't think it is? Yeah, what yeah, do you think it is first? I, I would think that um, it would be a little closer um, spray-wise because um, Maz has been okay. Um, hasn't been the best. I mean, he in his last two starts, he allowed um, five runs on ten hits. So, hasn't been too bad. Um, I do think Gray has been really good. Only one earned run in his last two starts. He bounced back from a rough first start. Uh, but Texas is reeling a little bit. They lost four of six. Um, depending on what we can get, if we can get a, a short price with Texas, I'll probably lay it with, with Gray and Texas and probably lean to the over. Um, but with no lines, it's kind of hard to kind of dictate on which side I'm going to be on. But if we can get somewhere, you know, anything under like 130, um, I think I'll be on Texas. That's pretty much what I thought, yeah. Um, Gray has just been settling down. He had a couple of really short starts, sort of three mm -hmm. innings. But I stretched out five innings in his last start. Um, and been settling down. Mine's just been fine. But I just prefer Texas over Detroit. Detroit is still... Um, so I saw someone describe it as soft-hitting Detroit, and that's exactly <laughs> what they're doing. Um, so after that last start, I prefer Texas and I prefer the Tigers. And again, I, I thought the price might be around minus 125, a price that I'd be happy to take. Yeah, uh, the, fork, uh, the Forklift Certified Podcast is telling us that Mars has been a no-running first inning hero. Um, I noticed he's been throwing out some nerfy plays. I'm not sure I'm quite dangerous enough to get on the nerfy plays yet, um, but I'll try my best. I'm going to grow up. I'll grow up here and I'll <laughs> get in on some of these nerfy picks that you put out. Um, okay. 6.35, then into the evening slate. Um, Minnesota Twins at the Baltimore Orioles. Minnesota have uh, Chris Paddock as their starting pitcher, and it will be Grayson Rodriguez for Baltimore Plus 140 on the Twins, minus 160 on Baltimore with a total of eight and a half, Lanty. Yeah, I'm going to go with Minnesota here. I, I, I went with Baltimore tonight. Um, I, I think we get, you know, somewhat of a uh, of a zigzag theory here. Baltimore, um, before they won yesterday, and they barely won um, that game. It took like two runs late for them to get there. They were outscored, you know, by 14 or 15 runs by Milwaukee. Now, granted, uh, Minnesota's defense is not anywhere – I mean, offense is not anywhere close to what um, Milwaukee's offense is right now. But I do think that the pitch in the paddock can really be uh, to the advantage of Minnesota. I mean, he's faced two tough offenses in uh, the Dodgers and that same Milwaukee team, only allowed four runs combined. Um, so he shut down both of those. He's got another offense here, uh, so he won't be rattled at all. I think that he'll come in um, and be able to pitch – and be able to pitch well. Uh, so maybe as much as I'm talking, maybe I want to go first five, like a full unit first five and then a half unit full game for Minnesota. Uh, the thing I'm worried about is Paddock does give up, you know, uh, the home, he has given up two home runs, well, a home run and back to back starts. So I kind of want to want that to be be down. And um, I do think Grayson Rodriguez on the other side has been going really well Two earn runs or less in all three starts. Uh, he's been prone to giving up home runs as well, though. He had three in his four start, three in his um, three starts. 
Uh, he has been striking guys out 21 to 5 K to walk ratio. I might look at his K prop too, Mal, but I'm going to go Minnesota first five full game. And I'm going to go full game under with both of these pitches, uh, pitching well on them um, t- tomorrow night. Yeah, the, the under is my pick. I've got a first five under actually here. Um, yeah, I like that too. I watch had it quite closely because um, in some of my fantasy teams, you can he was listed as a relief pitcher. So you can play him as a relief pitcher and he's been getting starts. So um, I craftily picked him up there, and which is why I've had more... Um, I've had more than half an eye on him. And two shortish starts, Captain C no points out, two exact same stat lines, four innings pitched, two earned with a homer. Um, and I'm kind of all right with that. Tomorrow, the Twins have won both of his starts as well. Rodriguez has been really, really good. So this comes down to do you trust Paddock or not? Um, and I'm going to have to, yeah. I think he'll be okay. Um, so, yeah, I'll go for a first five under. Uh, with this one, Lonte, kind of on the same page. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the next game on the slate is 6 4 Eastern first pitch. And we have two left handed pitchers here going between the Colorado Rockies and the Philadelphia Phillies. It is Austin Gomba for the Rockies. It is Ranger Suarez um, for Philadelphia. Lines are plus 195 on the Rockies, minus 240 on Philly. And eight and a half is the total. Um, obviously, last night we handicapped a minus 300 favourite with uh, <laughs> Philadelphia here. And we did struggle to, to want Philly anywhere near that price. Um, Gomba's not been awful is probably the nicest thing you can say about him. And Colorado have won two out of his three starts as well. Um, Suarez has been fine too. Uh, his last start was really good. Six scoreless against Pittsburgh. He's got his home as well. Um, I did want to factor in Colorado somehow in this um, and Gomba, but there was one little thing that swung it for me towards my pick, which is a Philly run line pick, and it was the batting averages against left-handed pitching, where Philly are up near a 260 and Colorado are down near a 220. And we know that Philly can do damage. They've got players who will at lefties and will do damage against them. Um, and that was the only thing that swung it, because actually I wasn't too thrilled about taking Philadelphia. Um, but that yeah, that's what done it for me. I don't think it'll be an absolute blowout, but Philly should be two runs better than them uh, with those numbers. So I'll take Philly on the run line, Lonte. Yeah, I'm kind of uh, echoing what you put. I, I like the Philly team total too. Uh, you mentioned Gomber. He has been pitching well, but Insano took my, kind of took my handicap in the, in the chat. Uh, this is this will be his first road start, so um, I think it's a get right series for Philadelphia. I think we both brought that up last um, last episode. I think that continues here, so I expect them to score um, some runs, and I, I like that run line. I'll even probably do some reverse run line, not reverse run line, but some alternate run lines. Um, probably yeah. lay a two, lay two and a half, thinking that the Phillies can get right here um, instead of laying that big number. So I do like the Phillies here with you, Mal. Um, while Gomber has been pitching well, that has been at Coors. Um, and I think he gets he's in for a rude awakening against a, a Phillies team whose offense has kind of been up and down. No idea what channel I left the TV on before I started this show, Lonte. Um, but as I'm sitting here now, I've obviously muted it. All I can see is women in bikinis going down <laughs> water slides with some of the best. So if I appear slightly distracted, Lonte, <laughs> I mean, I'm, that's why I'm not listening to you. I'm looking at the uh, the women in bikinis going down water slides. So yeah. Uh, it's better than watching Austin Gomba, I would suggest. Yeah, uh, I would, uh, I would agree. <laughs> Sorry, Austin. Um, where are we going? Six forty Eastern first pitch um, between the San Francisco Giants. I can't take my eyes off it. And the Miami Marlins. Um, Jordan Hicks, pull yourself together. Jordan Hicks is going for the Giants. Ryan Weathers, left-handed pitcher for Miami, uh, minus one thirty-five for the Giants. Plus 115 for Miami. I've seen totals of eight, but I've also seen totals of eight and a half. So pay your money and take your choice, Lonte. What you got? Yeah, I'm, I like the under. Uh, both of those numbers, I think we see a, a low-scoring game. Uh, Jordan Hicks has been – is it Jordan? It's Jordan Hicks, right? It's not Jordan Hicks. That's the football player. No, it's Jordan Hicks. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, he's been really good um, thus far. Two runs and in, in three starts. He has pitched with, he has pitched well into games, so he's giving you some length for for the, um, San Francisco. I do think 
it's, it hasn't been a big sample size, but I do think going back to last year that San Francisco, they really hit lefties uh, well, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, forgive me if that's not as accurate, but I think they do a good job of, of hitting lefties, and they have been um, since last year. And with Weathers, I mean, he's been solid in his last two starts as well. Only one earned run allowed. Only four hits, man. Four hits allowed in each of his uh, last two games. So he hasn't allowed over four hits. I think we see a low-scoring game, uh, maybe a two-to-one, three-to-two type of game. If I had to pick a side, I would lean with San Francisco and Hicks, just thinking that we can get more offense out of San Francisco than we can out of Miami. Yeah, that um, I don't like necessarily the, the under, but I do think we can get more offense out of the Giants in Miami. I mean, that's not a hot take particularly. Um, Hicks has really been one of the best stories so far this season. Yeah, um, everyone's loved his stuff for two or three years, but he just hasn't been able to get on the mound regularly enough. Uh, and this time round, he's been absolutely brilliant. Miami, I handicapped Ryan Weathers last week on the show with Munaf. And we thought that was going to be his last turn through because Miami had pitchers coming back. Um, Weathers was clinging on to that fifth rotation spot. And then they've got and sent Max Meyer down. We talked about Max Meyer on the show last night. He was the yep. pitcher that was talking about the shadows and stuff like that. Max Meyer's a really good young pitcher. Lots of upside. Ryan Weathers isn't. So I get that there's a little bit of service, time manipulation and stuff like that. But it's just a load of bollocks. It's another another nail in the coffin of Miami um, and, and their fans as well. Um he did okay last time out. Did Ryan Weathers uh, scoreless against the Yankees? But I just can't trust him at all. Um, minus 135 is a perfectly fair price. And with a total of eight, I think the Giants team total comes into play as well, which is why I wasn't too thrilled about the, the low scoring angle. I think the Giants can get up to four or five as well. Um, so I'll take the Giants at minus 135 with a little team total uh, stuck on the end. Uh, we'll move on. Once we've talked about, there's nothing else to talk about. Uh, I really should do my preparation a little bit more. Um, yeah, we'll just move on. In fact, 6.50 Eastern first pitch is the LA Angels at the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, we have Jose Soriano uh, going for the Angels and Aaron Savale for the Tampa Bay Rays. Plus 130 on the Angels, minus 155 for the Rays with a total of eight. Uh, Lonte, take it away. Yeah, I like Tampa here. I think Tampa is going to um, break house in this series. I bet them today, um, and I'll be betting them again tomorrow. Uh, they got Savali on the mound, two earned runs on four hits in, in a start versus the Angels, so he's seen uh, he's seen those bats before. He has a lot of home run in every start, so he kind of might be wanting to limit that. Um, and he only had four Ks versus the Angels, but six-plus versus better offenses in Texas and Toronto, so I don't, I'm not sure how that works. But I think he'll come – um, with some good stuff to, uh, tomorrow. And I think he'll shut down the, the A's offense, who's pretty much inconsistent, although they have been playing better on the road as a team. Uh, I think Tampa will be too strong at home. Soriano, uh, by my numbers, Mal, appeared in three games, but only one start. Am, am I Was I looking yeah. at that wrong? No, I think you're probably right. It'll be some sort of either... Like a spot start? Or... Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, so. Okay, so thing. yeah, he did. So in one of those, um, in one of his appearances, he did... Uh, give up four to Tampa, and that was his last appearance, actually. Allowed three home runs in his last two outings. Um, I think Tampa rolls here, man. I would probably, you know, if you don't want to lay that much, uh, it's perfectly fine. I would just, like, maybe try to link them in a money lay, uh, money line parlay piece, maybe with, you know, Phillies to bring that down or just another small dog, that, I mean, a small favorite that you like. But I do think Tampa rolls here. I'm looking at Tampa uh, first five, team total over, and a uh, full game, man. Yeah, uh, Soriano has gone three innings twice out of the bullpen, so plenty long enough relief. And then four innings when he did start, but he's been hit uh, relatively hard on all of those yep. occasions. Yep. I was really surprised. We don't often give out, well, I'm, I'm not going to give out a minus 155 play. We tend not to deal with them. But I was really surprised at this price. If you are in the sure. business of backing the wall, or yeah. even using it as the cornerstone for a parlay, uh, this, this price is huge. I thought it would be short in this because there's not an awful lot to recommend Soriano um, over Savale particularly. So initially I wrote down the, the Rays run line, which I'll stick with. Um, but if you wanted to make a little parlay, if you're looking at some of these shorties, Washington, uh, the Dodgers are going to be short against Washington. And we just talked about the Phillies. Uh, I'd throw Tampa Bay in there as well as 
as competitive, as surprisingly competitive as the Angels have been, Lonte, like we mentioned last night. Uh, we will go to a 7 7 Eastern first pitch between the New York Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays. Two left-handed pitches here. It is Carlos Rodon for the Yankees, and we have Yusei Kikuchi going for the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, minus 120 for the pinstripes, plus 100 even money. The Blue Jays total here is at um, eight and a half. Another uh, good-looking game. This is one of the games where I would really like to see tonight's game first, just to see how the Blue Jays kind of perform, because they're the ones that, that give me the... Uh, Give me the willies a little bit. Rodon's been excellent. Uh, three games started, has only given up three earned runs. He's held the Diamondbacks and the Astros, um, two supposedly potent offences, although the Astros are struggling to show it. Uh, so similar comps. I've got no problem with him going in to the Rogers Centre. I haven't held Houston and Arizona. Um, Kikuchi... His last two starts, um, 11 and one third pitched, only given seven hits and one earned run. Did see the Yankees on April the 5th, went five and a third scoreless. Um, the Blue Jays' pen doesn't fill me with confidence. Um, so if you were forcing me to pick a side, I'd pick the Yankees. But I can see a little bit of a pitching duel emerging here. I think both can go well. So I'd be taking the first five under. I'm surprised that that tool's up at eight and a half. Um, yeah. I would have had that a little bit lower. So, yeah, I'll dip down on the under, uh, Lonte. Yeah, the only thing that scares me, I, I like the under as well. The only thing that scares me, if um, if Kikuchi's running bad, you know, he's, he kind of has times where he's really good. And then when he's bad, he's really bad. And if the, Yan the top of that Yankee lineup can get a hold of him, it, they could rattle off and, and go over this total by themselves. So that's the only thing that's kind of keeping me off from being a stronger play. But four of their last five meetings um, have went over. But if you look at the trajectory of what each team um, has done in their last five, they've un they're under in four of their last five. And they're facing opponents who have less offense um, than what they have to and what they have right now, which Toronto is kind of debated. I think you mentioned it. They've been kind of up and down offensively. But I like Rodon. Um, Yankees performed really well on the road. I think they only lost two road games. Um, I'm, I'm going to lay it here with the Yankees and uh, lean to the under. Okay. A few team rides here so far this evening. Um, we will go back to the top of the page for a 7-10 Eastern first pitch between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the New York Mets. This one is off the board as Pittsburgh uh, pitcher is TBD. I believe it's going to be Jared Jones, uh, the yeah, rookie. That's what I saw too. He's had a great you you got the same line, yeah? Yep, yep. Cool. And left-handed pitcher, Jose Quintana for New York. Um, I like this game. I, I really would like to see some lines on this. I mean, we the game tonight, it's not dissimilar. It's Martin Perez and Adrian Hauser um, in Pittsburgh were a small dog, plus 105. I think that'll be priced up similarly, unless Pittsburgh thwack them tonight uh, in the might get nipped in by 10 or 20 points. Um, but Jones has been great. Absolutely great. He's legit. None of, the, none of what he's doing is happening by accident. Um, I can't see him throwing in a clunker. Um, really mature as well. Really mature stuff from him. Some of the a lot of rookies have come up and thrown well in short bursts or flame throwing stuff uh, being really flashy. Jones He's got all the stuff, but he's bit like I said, you've had the length out of him. He just looks very composed in what he's been doing. Um, I tell you what, two walks to 25 strikeouts, that tells you what you're getting here uh, with Jared Jones. He's given up two homers in his last two starts. That would be the only little thing that puts you off at the moment. Quintana is okay. Short the starts from Quintana. If you listen to the show on Friday night, anyone, with me and Scott, Scott had a little system play on the Mets starting pitchers uh, total out. He said, going under. It's going under every day. In the mm. two days since, um, Scott messaged me and said it's gone under again. Um, and it's almost like the Mets are doing this on purpose. They seem to have a plan, uh, which is unlike the Mets. Um, or it's <laughs> coincidence, one or the other. But it does look planned out. Um, Quintana's last game was that weird 16-4 win against Atlanta. But I still prefer Jones to Quintana. 
and I still prefer Pittsburgh to the Mets. So I'll take the Pirates. Uh, like I say, hopefully uh, somewhere around even money, maybe. Yeah, I didn't have much um, because I didn't see any lines. But if I could get something, um, if I can get something on Pittsburgh at, at a plus price, I'm probably going to be on it. I, I would like to get like plus one ten, plus one fifteen ish. But so if I can get that, I'll, I'll be on Pittsburgh. I think this is their series as well. They perform really well on the road. Uh, not a believe. I, I do kind of like Quintana, but I'm just not a fan of the Mets as a whole. And like you said, if they're just not giving their arms the their their starting rotation like enough innings, I don't trust that bullpen at all. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna lean to Pittsburgh, hoping we get a you know a, a fair price, uh, but nothing yeah. official. Nothing official. It's the absolute key is getting a fair price on Pittsburgh, like I yeah. say. Uh, so we'll see how good our judgment is because I think round about even money for that one yeah. tomorrow. Um, seven ten Eastern first pitch, Cleveland Guardians at the Boston Red Sox continue after Boston let me down today. Uh, Tanner Beebe goes for Cleveland, and we have Garrett Whitlock. I'm going for Boston. This one is a match on the books, minus 110 each of two, with a total nine. Um, I like uh, Tanner Beebe, his game log and his numbers. Are skewed. He was one of the pitchers who we keep mentioning it. Gave up the the five earned run inning, the one inning to the Chicago White Sox right. last week when the Guardians kept gifting them a five nothing lead. Um, but they kept him in the game, and after that, he was absolutely fine again. Um, and he will be fine in this spot tomorrow. This Boston lineup, I didn't really enjoy what was going on today. There was a little incident with Tyler O'Neill and was it Sedan Rafaela? I think they went for a fly ball and bashed into each other. Looked like there was bits of teeth flying everywhere, black eyes like mine. Um, so I don't know. O'Neill had to come out of the game. Now, O'Neill's probably been Boston's best hitter. Uh, so I would monitor that situation. Um, they just couldn't string anything together. They never really looked like it. Whitlock's great. Whitlock fits the mould of several um, Boston pitchers. Who pitched, was it, who pitched for Boston today? It was... Um... Uh, hold on, I can tell you because I had. Wasn't how? Oh, it was Crawford. Cut to Crawford. Yeah, cut, cut to Crawford. Yeah. These three, it's hard to tell them apart because you just say, you see one of the three names and they go, oh yeah, those lads are all right. Crawford, Hauk, Whitlock. Uh, they're all one and the same. So I've got no problem with Whitlock either. Um, so really, uh, the Cleveland bullpen should be back tomorrow. They, re- they didn't. Uh, they rested Class A today um, and a couple of the other uh, big boys as well. I've just got to take the under. I think nine's a really high number, having watched what we watched today with two pitches that I like. That number's high. Um, maybe some weather in there. I don't know. But I'm happy to take the under, Lanty. Yeah, I'm with you, Team Ride, on that. Um, I think BB, he has to cut down on the walks a little bit. Uh, what is, I have him down for um, eight walks in his three starts. Uh, he hasn't faced a tough offense at all. I mean, Boston's offense hasn't been as electric. But, I mean, when you're facing the White Sox in Oakland, I think that's – you're going to be step up in class to, no matter what opponent you face. So I do think um, he has his work cut out for him if Boston can put back to the ball, unlike what they did today. Uh, but I do like the under as well, Mal. I think Cleveland is a offensively, I guess, not they're not an offensively talented team. Um, rely more so on just kind of, you know, they, they they rely more on defense and just winning games with the defense and not trying to put you know a point or two on the board and winning with defense. But I do think Whitlock will be able to shut down the Cleveland offense. He's allowed two earned runs in his three starts. Um, hasn't allowed over hasn't allowed more than four hits in either of those starts. He also has um, a little bit of walk issues, six walks in his last two starts. So if they can keep those guys off base, man, Mal, I think we can see something similar, maybe a three one, uh, three two type of game. Take that, mate. Absolutely perfect. Uh, next up is uh, 740 Eastern first pitch, the Kansas City Royals at the Chicago White Sox. Uh, Brady Singer goes for Kansas City, and it's guess what? Derek Feddy. It's his turn today. Uh, oh, we keep, did we handicap him yesterday? I probably almost yeah. Uh, I've handicapped yeah. him about 45 times this season already, <laughs> and it's April the 15th. Um, I don't know if there's lots of Feddy brothers all pitching for White Sox. Um, no lines because Eric Feddy is TBD, so maybe they found another pitcher down the back of the sofa or something they might throw. Um, but I've got no <laughs> lines for this, Lonte. Um Singer has been great. Kansas City, Londy, um, are the team whose playoff odds 
have play of the percentage odds have moved the most in MLB since the start of the season. They are up some 20 and 21, 22 percent, Kansas City. Um, so they are the uh, they've been the hot hand so far. He's only allowed 10 hits and four walks, singer, and 18 and one third. Kansas City have won all of his games. Um, saw the White Sox on the 5th of April, six and a third, only gave up two hits. So, yeah, fine with Singer. Um, Fetty played in that same game. Kansas City won it 2-1. That's the only fly in the argument. But I don't think um, that's a fair representation. Normally, uh, Kansas City are good for more runs. And I've been scoring more runs since they were, um, since that 2-1 game early in the season. So, I've seen no lines, but I'll just take a boring old Royals on the run line, I think. Yeah, I'm going to be with you there. I, there's no way I'm back in the, the White Sox. Uh, Royals have had success against the White Sox a few weeks ago as well. They pretty much dominated that series. I don't, I don't think we see uh, much change, especially if they throw in Fetty, uh, who's been giving up a ton of runs. I think actually Kansas City hit him well, um, if I'm not mistaken, in that last series. But, yeah, I'm 100% agreeing with you, Mal. There's, there's no need to go too deep into this handicap. Um, we're just going to fade the White Sox. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, Captain Insano has given us uh, the White Sox are two to one uh, to have the worst record um, in MLB at the moment, which is a nice looking bet because they don't That's look not a like bad price, doing yeah. much. In Washington have been price. funky in Oakland. We're going to get to Oakland in a little while, uh, but more than competitive, uh, the Athletics. So yeah, I like that bet a lot, Captain. Eight tennis and first pitch is the Atlanta Braves and the Houston Astros. Ronaldo Lopez scores tonight uh, for the Braves. Um, and it's Hunter Brown for the Houston Astros. Minus 120 for Atlanta. Even money, plus 100 Houston. Total's big. Total's at 10, Lonte. Yeah, I think we can get over that too, man. I think we really can get over that, especially with how Hunter Brown's been pitching. Now, uh, caveat to this, he has been great at well i mean it's only once it's only one start but he didn't give up a run at home but in his last two starts for 14 um earned runs and this will be obviously an elite offense something that he hasn't faced um albeit he's at home where he's comfortable but i do think that the atlanta bats can can get to him that atlanta their offense is i mean obviously we know what it is but they have spurts where they just can't do anything and then they kind of rely on the, the rally like we've seen with uh ozuna who, who won us both some money, Mal, if I'm not mistaken, uh, yesterday. So I do think that Atlanta's bats can get going here. Their their defense has allowed – like their pitching is kind of suspect. Um, but Lopez, one earned run, allowed in 12 innings pitch. But, again, just like I was saying with Hunter Brown, he hasn't faced a, a tough offense. He's faced two, like, average to below average offenses, nothing like he's seeing um, with Houston, especially being on the road. The good thing about it is Houston doesn't perform well at home. So uh, you got that going for you. So rather than going for a side mile, I'm going over the total. I'm going – it's a big total. I think we can get, you know, an eight to, eight to seven. Um, even a seven to six can get us over here. So I think we see a competitive high-scoring game between two of the best teams uh, – well, two of the premier teams. I won't say best. Two of the premier teams yeah. uh, in the MLB. Yeah, the big names. But Houston certainly haven't played like right. it so far. Travis yeah. making me laugh with his uh, chemically inspired – uh, bets in the chat. I got the Royals at 14 to 1, Trev, and I was perfectly sober uh, and free of chemicals when I done that. Um, I like the difference of opinion in the chat here. We've got Captain Insano, uh, Hunter Brown bounce back, question mark, uh, mm. and then Matty DM. Um, absolutely the other side of it. Uh, doesn't want anything to do with these Astros. Um, and I agree with Matty on this one. Um, I mean, Hunter Brown's just been in shambles, in absolute yeah. shambles. Um, Atlanta is still full of runs. Having just talked about Kansas City being the team whose uh, percentage for the playoffs has improved the most, Houston are the team who have dropped off the most. They've dropped around about 16 percentage points on the grounds of this slow start as well. Um, but yeah, the total is high. An Atlanta team total, I think, we get a six. I'm guessing it's going to be five and a half for that line. Uh, but yeah, Hunter Brown just hasn't showed anything at all. And it will only take two or three swings of the bat from this very deep Braves lineup, and we can cash an Atlanta team total. Um, I missed a game out there. Uh, Lonte, I have gone out of sequence. Uh, we Sorry. have a 7 4 Eastern first pitch between the San Diego Padres and the Milwaukee Brewers. Dylan Cease 
for uh, San Diego. Left-handed pitcher Wade Miley goes for the Brewers. Minus 125 the Padres. Plus 105 for Trebs Brewers. Total is at 8.5, Lunty. Yeah, give me the Brewers, man. Uh, like I said, they're the hottest team in baseball right now. Uh, really good at, at home. They won 7 of 10. Well, they won 7 of 11 because um, they lost yesterday. They're averaging like right around nine runs um, in, in their last five games or six games. All have been on the road. So I think the offense is going to come right back to, to the stadium. I think they'll be able to – now Dylan Cease has been good um, so far. Two or, run, two or less um, runs allowed in three starts. He's also went deep into the game, six innings pitched in his last two as well. But I think this offense for Milwaukee is going to be too good. I'm kind of worried about Miley. Um, he only allowed uh, one earned run on one hit and four innings pitched. But I'm trying to see if he's going to go a little bit longer or if he's still going to be on somewhat of a uh, like a pitching limitation. So that kind of worries me because if he's pulled early uh, and San Diego's offense can get into a good rhythm, I think they might can do some damage. But either way, I think we get an over, and I do think Milwaukee wins. So I'll take the short home dog. Uh, Milwaukee. I knew you were going to do that, Lundy. If you'd asked me at the top of the show to pick one Lundy bet for tonight, <laughs> yep. it was going to be the Brewers money line. Yep. Um, when I handicapped these a few hours ago, I didn't see any lines. And sometimes I've just, I feel I'm happy to take the best price, the, the bigger price team, because there wasn't an awful lot between them. But I did think the Brewers, a little bit like Pittsburgh earlier on, I thought the Brewers would be a small underdog. And I was happy with them as a small underdog. Both pitches have been going really well. I'm quite pleased with Dylan Cease because for some reason he sort of ended up as a bit of a figure of fun occasionally. Um, but he settled in there really quickly and hit the ground running. But Miley's gone well as well. Um, and I did say, I'd, I'd just take the, my, the final line of my note says, take the best price team, brackets, Milwaukee, question mark. And that's exactly where we've ended up. Uh, Milwaukee at plus 105. Um, I'll take... Serials joined us. Um, Serials, you just want me to mention that um, I gave out a 5-1 to one and a plus-175 winner on the Chelsea versus Everton match tonight <laughs> um, in the Premier League Gambling Podcast. If you want me to plug the show, Serial, I will plug the show just for you. Go and listen to that, yeah. First goal scorer, 5-1, to one, and a Chelsea team total. Chelsea won 6-0. I thought the team total over 2.5. So I could have gone up the ladder. Um, yeah, we could have been Lonte's ladders. Um, we could have been well and truly up there tonight, but uh, yeah, reinvest that captain on the following game, <laughs> which is a nine forty Eastern first pitch between the Chicago Cubs and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, Kyle Hendricks goes for the Cubs, and left-handed pitcher Tommy Henry uh, is on the hill for the Snakes. I mean. Kyle Hendricks, I've had issues with Kyle Hendricks for years. I I used to kind of try and root for him. Um, and it's never an easy watch, just nibbling around at the edge. You're just waiting for someone to smash him out the park. And <laughs> you look at this game and you see a pitcher, even without looking at his name, with an ERA over 12. And you try and find positives for him in a game log or in in his metrics or something. And I can't find any. There's nothing. Um, he has had... I tell you, no, sorry. I found one positive. This is all I've got. Um, he's had really tough assignments. He's taken on the Dodgers, the Padres and the Rangers. So he's faced three tough opponents. But he's now going to the Diamondbacks, so no let-up. Um, Tommy Henry has had three starts. His last two, very similar. Five innings, two earned runs. Multi-walks in each one. He's given up a homer in each of them. But he does look like he's settling down a bit. Um, it's easier just to fade Hendricks here. Um, initially, without seeing the lines, I had the Arizona team total down. Um, I also now love Arizona at minus 125, having seen the lines. And I think the over's in play as well at nine and a half, because Tommy Henry can give a few back as well. So this could easily be getting to an 8-3, 8-4 in favour of Arizona. So we'll take Arizona to win. Um hit the team total, and go over as well. Yeah, I struggle with this game, Al. Um, I, just like I've been struggling with both of these teams, uh, I can't win betting on them. I can't win betting against them. And now they're, you know, primed against each other. So uh, I'm just going to tell you, I, I just don't uh, – obviously Hendricks is the big part of why I'm telling you because of uh, the numbers that you read off. And Arizona at home, 
their bats to like come alive. So I, I think I like that team total. Maybe a first five team total. And if you do want to get you know full DJ nice. in, bet bet the Yurfi. Um, thinking Hen- thinking Hendricks can give up <sighs> give up a, a, a run early here. So um, I might pivot to do some alternate stuff here. But as far as the full game, I, honestly, I've had no luck with either of these teams. Um, I've been on them, they lose. I've been against them, they win. So I will go with some DJ in action here. Go Yurfi. Um, yes, plus uh, I guess it's, go- it's going to be a plus number. So I'm going to go with the Yurfi, and I go with the first five Arizona team total over. Yes, Lonte, love a Yurfi. Well played. The uh, forklift certified gambling podcast will be buzzing with that. Matty <laughs> DM doesn't want anything to do with uh, Kyle Hendricks as well. Very shrewd man. And nine forty Eastern first pitch. The Cincinnati Reds are at the Seattle Mariners. Hunter Green. Goes for Cincinnati, and my guy Logan Gilbert goes for Seattle. Uh, plus one fifteen for the Reds, minus one thirty five Seattle. Total is low, seven and a half. Lunty. Yeah, man, I struggle with this one too, man. Um, I want to bet, I want to bet the Reds, but I, I wanted a little bit bigger price. I know Hunter Green was roughed up by Milwaukee, but we were just talking about how good Milwaukee's offense has been. Um, but prior to that, he's been really good in his first two starts. Um, this is this will be his first road start, so I know that's kind of been a thing um, here as we've been kind of fading those pitchers. And while I do want to fade them, it's just Seattle is another team that I haven't had any luck with. Um, I, I've been betting on them, thinking that they're going to catch up to to the rating that I have on them, but they just haven't. Um, their offense is pretty much hit or miss. Uh, we mentioned it yesterday. They put people on, they just don't score for whatever reason. So I'm not sure how that's going to work. We know Hunter Green is going to come out. And, and throw gas. He's at six plus uh, K's in each game. Uh, but I do think Gilbert will be. He's only had one bad start. The other two, he gave up only two combined runs. Um, he's at seven plus K's in all all of those starts. So I, I'm probably going to pivot to some like player props, some Gilbert um, total outs, and probably some um, some strikeouts for him and Green. But ultimately, on the side, now it, it's tough, man. Maybe you can talk me into something. I'm leaning to I'm leaning to Seattle. But if I get like if the money comes in on um, on Seattle and they push that Cincinnati price up a little bit, if I can get like plus one twenty five, plus one thirty, I'm probably gonna bet them. So it's, I guess it's kind of a number thing, but I don't have a good feel for it. Maybe you could talk me into something. Not really. If you ask me to pick who I think will win, I think Seattle will win. If you ask me if I want to bet them at minus one thirty five, not really. It's yeah, not exactly. very appealing. Um, I don't know if you saw. Uh, Randy's just mentioning that they benched J Rod. Um, they brought J Rod into the pinch run last night in the ninth inning when they had a chance to win the game, and he got picked off at first base. You know, for <laughs> fuck's sake, come on, be better than that, man. That's ridiculous. That kind of sums up where Seattle have been. The only reason I would pick Seattle is that Gilbert is my favourite of these Seattle pitchers, uh, Kirby, and I know that's what Brian Wu's got on the end of the list, but um. Emerson Hancock's another one. But he's my favourite of them. Um, and Green uh, can blow up. Like, he, he got hit quite hard last time. As much as I like him, he's fun. There is a, there is a, a blow up in him. But, yeah, I'll take Seattle because um, we're paid to take somebody. But <laughs> I just uh, it'll be down my list uh, if things are better. Just the price is just a little bit. Right. Uh, right. Over you are struggling to get over the finish line, so, yeah. Um, not thrilled about it. Uh, the penultimate game on the show is the St. Louis Cardinals at the Oakland Athletics. Uh, Lansling goes for the Cardinals and left-handed pitcher J.P. Sears uh, will go for Oakland. Uh, we have prices of... Find them. Where are we going here? Uh, Lancelot in the Cardinals, minus 140. JP Sears in the Athletics, plus 120. Total is set at eight. Um, so Lancelot is kind of holding it together. Um, the start of the season was a real hold your breath and see. He's gone good start, bad start, good start so far. And the key is him not giving up home runs. He needs to keep the ball in the yard. He's given up zero either side of an effort where he gave up three. Um, but I can't back him. I can't back him at all because you never know what's going to what's gonna happen here. Um, Oakland have won six of the last eight. We said we would mention them. 
um, in relation to the White Sox finishing with the worst record. Six of eight for Oakland, and deservedly so. Fun to watch. Um, Sears pitched six and a third scoreless against Texas, and that really represents a step forward for him. He's been talked about in in positive terms for a long time. That's the first time he's. I think that's probably his best display of what he's uh, what he's capable of. The bullpen's fine. Um, Oakland have given up the fewest homers in MLB, which is a nuts old stat. You wouldn't have uh, that would have been a big old price at the start of the season. Um, so I've got a couple of angles in here, Lonte. My first one is just to bet Oakland, which I'm going to do with plus one twenty. Um, but I'm going to feed Lance Lynn in the home run market. We we'll see some homers. Oakland have got a few uh, bats that can hit them. The three I've picked out, looking at my magic chart, are Abraham Toro. Um, Zach Geloff and Lawrence Butler. They'll be big prices. These aren't household names. I'm not sure I knew who Lawrence Butler was till I picked him <laughs> two hours ago. Uh, but we'll all know him tomorrow when he hits a home run. Uh, so Oakland and some dingers at the big prices, Lanty. Yeah, man, I'm going to go to a staple that we, we came up with last year, man. We're going to go with Oakland first five. Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, if we get if we get that bad, if we get just semi-bad Lance Lynn, I think they can score a run or two off of him. Um, early on, and then I don't want to be in the game at all to watch Oakland kind of give it away or, or, or blow the game, whatever whatever the case may be. So I'm going to go first five, man. I, I don't trust Lance Land on the road, especially not laying 140 or, or anything um, nor or anything with a minus sign beside it. Uh, I know Oakland's bad, but we mentioned it, man. They've been fighting. They've been competitive. Uh, they're actually no, not the worst team. Um, not even close, I don't think. I think they're, you know, like middling. So uh, I'm going to go with Oakland first five, money line. And I'll go with a first five under as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, Oakland first five was our was our system play last yes, year. Sir. Yes, sir. Um, right, okay. I just jumped forward to Friday on my schedule, and I will tell you why in a minute. All will become clear. The final game on the card here um, is... What time is this going off? Sorry, I got back the right page. 10 10 cowboy time. Washington Nationals at the LA Dodgers. Left handed pitcher, uh, Patrick Corbin for Washington. The Dodgers are TBD, and it is an actual TBD. I've got no idea who it might be. I don't know if you've seen anything on this. Yeah, I didn't see anything so no. for either side. Are you not? Uh, yeah, so I mean, if you've got anything on this, I have got a little play on the Dodgers, which I'll get to in a moment, but. Yeah, tell me what you've uh, what you got on this one. I got I got nothing, man. It's just I'm probably gonna play the the Dodgers team total over. I mean, I play it like every other game. It always comes through, and and when and when it doesn't, I just double up the next time. Um, there, man, the Dodgers are just. I mean, especially against Washington, depending on who they throw, obviously. But I don't think it takes much to handicap a Dodgers game. Obviously, you not want to you don't want to lay what they're going to be laying. They might be north of three dollars, depending on who they throw. Uh, maybe somewhere like two fifty. Uh, at the lowest, but yeah, I don't have much now. Simple with me with the Dodgers, man. It's either I'm fading them or I'm just taking a team total of one, one or the other. Right. Well, I've got something we can all get involved in here for the Dodgers this week. This is a massive team ride. Uh, everybody on the bus. Captain Insano is kind of on it. He's taking he's taking the Dodgers as a survivor pick this week. Um, Twenty seven MLB teams this week have one home series and one road series. Two teams this week have back-to-back -back away series. One team in MLB has back-to-back -back home series, and it is the LA Dodgers. So they get Washington uh, for, is it three games? Is it four games? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Let me see what's happening on Thursday. No, three games against Washington, and then they get the New York Mets for three games. Um so what we're going to do is we're going to roll them all up. They're going to go on a six-game winning streak. They're going to win them all. So we'll get we'll back them on the money line. We might not be rich when it happens tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but by Sunday night, we'll have a fun little sweat going when they're going six out of six. Uh, so that's my angle in on the Dodgers this week. Um, and I think, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, 15 games in the book. Uh, what we've got left is our lock and dog Uh I haven't had a look yet. I let Lonte lead off last night and he stole mine, but then did donate <laughs> them back to me. Um, yeah, it's all good, man. I got, I got some. I, I'll get short and sweet to the point, man. Straight to the point. Right. So, okay. You you go. I'm gonna go. Around. I'm gonna go with two locks. I'm gonna go with that A's uh, first five 
I think they can get it done um, nice. uh, against Lance Lynn. Uh, I don't think the first five numbers are out yet. I didn't see any um, for, for that specific game, but I did see one for Arizona minus 130 in the first five at home. So I'm going to lay the 130 in the first five at home for Arizona, thinking they come out and jump on uh, Kyle Hendricks pretty early and often. Uh, for my dog, I'm going to go with a team that me and you both agreed on, Mal. I think that uh, the number is too short on the money line, but of course you don't want to give out you know, 155 favorite. So I'm going to go with Tampa Bay on the run line, minus one and a half, plus 140. I think they absolutely destroy Tampa all se- I mean, uh, the Angels all series. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I'm happy with that. Um, I've got a few. The I've got a few in this dangerous price. So this, I don't like this minus 130 price area. It always seems a bit of a trap for me. It seems too easy. Um, but I'm going to do it again, though, because um, <laughs> I don't, yeah, we... I never learn a lesson, aren't they? It's one of it's one of the things people find charming about me. Um, San Francisco Giants to beat Miami. Um, Ryan Weathers isn't it, and I like Jordan Hicks, so let's trust him. The Giants initially had the team total, but I think that's a workable price minus one thirty four for the Giants. And there's an underdog. The Brewers are tiny. I've got these tiny dogs everywhere. I don't know if Pittsburgh are going to be a dog. I would like them. Uh, Against the Mets, the, can I give out the Brewers again? They're too short. Hey man, a winner you've is a winner. Gone, you've just gone. Yeah, you're right. Like, and I know you like the Brewers as well. Yeah, uh, I love Lonte. Yeah, okay. So we'll go with that then. The Brewers are plus one hundred five. Um, it's a teeny tiny puppy, but why the hell not? Um, they are my two players. Uh, Lonte, we're done. Um, anything? Uh, else you want to tell the people uh, before we let them go? Nah, man. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Thanks to the chat. All the usual suspects. Uh, appreciate that, man. Hopefully we can, you know, get some winners tonight and roll those winnings over and bet them all, bet all the game tomorrow. So, yeah, best of luck to everybody. Yeah, agree with that. Uh, the chat was fun. It was buzzing. Uh, Matty, Randy, Trev, Captain Sano, Serial, the forklift guy. Uh, who else was in there? Uh, Ryan was in first up as well, so appreciate that. Yeah, that was good. Uh, back-to-back shows for myself and Lonnie. Um, I've got to go to work tomorrow. I'm going to Leicester, Leicestershire. I don't know what it was booked a casino for a Tuesday night in the middle of uh, in Middle England, but I would be down rich there. people, man. Rich people. Maybe yeah, Sha- maybe maybe a Sean yeah. maybe a Sean and Kramer. Maybe they're coming over. I um I'll be on the uh, roulette wheel or the blackjack table this time tomorrow. Uh, when somebody will be here with an MLB Gambling Podcast. Thanks, everyone. Tons of fun, as always. Good luck with your bets. Uh, We will see you down the road. Cheers.